Good afternoon, Canastota. I'm Sean Bassetta, Superintendent of the Canastota Central School District. Today is Friday, May 29th, and this is the eighth edition of our weekly school operations video update. As always, let's start by reviewing updated numbers on our meal distribution operation. I'm pleased to announce that through Thursday, May 28th, 83,894 meals have been served to our students with an average of 688 students receiving meals on a daily basis since the beginning of the school shutdown period. Today's distribution will once again include meals for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We will revert back to our normal Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule starting this Monday, June 1st. Details of the summer meal program will be announced next week. Thanks to all of our staff for helping us continue this vital service. Given the high level of interest on the subject, I'd like to revisit the topic of graduation and end of year ceremonies. I want to reiterate the fact that we're still hopeful that we will be able to have an in-person graduation ceremony as scheduled on Saturday, June 27th. We continue to work on plans that will allow us to have a completely virtual ceremony, a completely in-person ceremony, and several versions somewhere in between based on whatever our situation is as we get closer to the 27th. Is this an efficient way of planning a graduation ceremony? Definitely not. However, we owe it to our students to have a ceremony that is safe, legal, and provides families a great experience that celebrates the achievements of our students. We've all seen how unpredictable our current situation is related to public policy. Literally from one day to the next, the rules keep changing. With a governor, after leading regions of the state to believe that they could begin phase two of the reopening process, changed the rules once again at the 11th hour just yesterday. When things change so dramatically within the space of hours and minutes, a month away from graduation seems like an eternity. A lot can change in that time. People have been asking me, what if the cap on public gatherings isn't lifted for another week or two? Can we still have an in-person ceremony? The answer is, we will still figure out a way to make it work. I and an army of people in the Canastota community will make sure that we can uh, make adjustments as the guidance and mandates evolve. It's also important that we get ideas and suggestions from our students. Opportunities for student participation has been scheduled for next week for students to meet with me and other school officials to discuss ideas relating to different options for graduation. They will have a voice in the process as we continue to shape our plans for, for various scenarios. Some people have also asked if we still will go ahead with the taping of the virtual graduation with individual families on June 10th, 11th, and 12th as scheduled. The answer is yes, because with or without a traditional ceremony on the 27th, we still want to give families an opportunity to have their moment in the spotlight, to walk across the stage, to have pictures with their family in a safe and orderly environment. And, and we will be able to incorporate parts of our taping into our TV show, Celebrating Our Seniors and Their Families, airing on June 25th on CW6. I will guarantee one thing, we will make sure our seniors have an awesome send off. More on our progress on graduation plans next week. Shifting gears, let me update you on our budget process. Last night, the district held its annual budget hearing on the proposed 2020-21 school budget which will be voted on June 9th by absentee ballot only. We understand that we can't interact as we normally do, so please contact our business manager, Nick Pinuccio, or me with questions related to the proposed budget. Since the adoption of the proposed budget last Thursday, Mr. Pinuccio and I have had conversations with members of our school community. In an attempt to ensure continued communication leading up to the vote, we will be posting a special question and answer feature today on our website with periodic updates throughout the week as new questions come in. Additionally, we'll dedicate a portion of our weekly video update to this important topic. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to our business official, Nick Panuccio, to answer some of those most frequent questions. Thank you, Sean. I'm gonna put a document up on the screen that I'm gonna go through verbatimly. What it is, it's questions and answers that have been asked to us by people of the community. We're going to update this live. It'll be on our website. So anytime someone asks a question that we want to communicate out to the community, you'll be able to go on and take a look at it. 
So this will be updated periodically based on questions received until the June 9th, 2020 budget vote. First question, when is the budget date and time for voting? The date of the budget vote is Tuesday, June 9th, 2020. Voting can only be done by absentee ballot that will come in the mail. The absentee ballots need to be received by 5 p.m. on Tuesday, June 9th, 2020, and any absentee ballot received after 5 p.m. on Tuesday, June 9th, 2020 will not be counted. Next question, if I did not see the budget presentation or any of the documents related to the budget, how can I look at them? The 2021 budget information can be found on our website. There's a link there that, that you can see. Just click on that link. It'll bring you right to the documents that are on the website pertaining to the 2021 budget. There's also information about the budget in multiple videos that are on our school's main website page. Again, you can click on that link right there. Scroll down the page and be able to see some of the presentations. Third question, what if we have a question about the budget? If you have any questions regarding the budget or the budget process, contact me at the district office. You can see my phone number right on there or that'll reach the district office and be able to get to me um, by our staff. Fourth question, what are the propositions for the 2021 budget vote? The propositions are as follows in A, B, and C. The first proposition is voting on our budget, which is the 2021 budget. Proposition two is voting on the purchase of three student transport vehicles. And the third proposition, as discussed during our capital project, prior to our capital project vote in December 2019, there's a new reserve to create so the district taxpayers share can be offset by reserve funds for future capital projects. Fifth question, what is the proposed tax increase and impact? The proposed tax increase is $327,430 and falls within the 2.65 tax cap. This will amount to 70 cents per thousand assessed value or if it's a thousand dollar home that's assessed at $70 per year. This is an interesting one. You know, I thought the tax cap is capped at 2%. The fact of the matter is the 2% is in the formula that the state came out with. It is not 2% at the end. So it could vary. It can go under 2% or over 2%, but the 2% is in the formula. You can read the legislation establishes a limit on the annual growth of real property taxes levied by local governments and school districts. The cap is not directly applicable to property tax rates or to the assessed value of real property. If you have any questions on that, again, give me a call at the office and I can discuss that further with you. I know that's kind of a convoluted um, convoluted question and, and, and tough to understand. The seventh question, what if the vote does not pass? The Board of Education may adopt a con contingency budget, which would be $327,430 in additional reductions. When is the second vote date so the district can avoid a contingency budget? There is no guidance on a second budget vote date in executive orders from Governor Cuomo. We believe that is due to time constraints. It will be virtually impossible to mail out absentee ballots and receive them in the, in the time of another budget vote. Our school attorneys also have verified that. Nothing is in the executive orders. Can we have a vote in July of 2020? Again, there's no guidance or law that will allow us to have a vote in July. July 1st, 2020 starts the next fiscal year. The district needs a budget prior to July 1st, 2020 in order to function in the next fiscal year. And finally, the last question for now, how many people are losing their jobs with this current budget? Nobody is losing their job due to the budget constraints that we have right now. Positions are not are not being replaced due to people leaving the district or retiring. That is called attrition, but no one is losing their jobs with this budget in the current state. Um, thank you very much. Uh, as I said before, we will update these on our website and during our weekly videos, I will continue to go over these questions so you are able to understand exactly what's going on. Thank you very much and I'll hand it over back to Sean. Thanks Nick for that update. Again, please don't hesitate to call or email Nick or me with any questions related to the budget proposal. I'm going to close today by drawing your attention to a great organizational tool that can help both students and adults. 
You've heard me say many times as we talk about Coach John Wooden and his pyramid of success, how important the use of goal setting process is to continued improvement. Using SMART goals is one of the most effective ways for people to achieve their goals. And the best part is there's nothing complicated about it and no magic involved. SMART goals are about three primary things. Number one, identifying a specific detailed picture of what you want to accomplish. Number two, creating a specific roadmap and action plan for success. And most importantly, number three, holding yourself responsible for sticking with your plan each and every day. Again, nothing fancy, but you know what? I've never had anyone who tried this process for any length of time that would say it doesn't work. Not that you always reach your goal exactly when you want to, but they always have recognized that they're better using goals than not using goals. In order to help you get started, Canastota Schools has developed our own goal setting program that is available to any of our students and their families. The program consists of a series of videos and guidance documents that will help you create, monitor, and adjust your own goals. As we close out this year, this system can provide a real help to any student who wants to do the very best that they can, even as we work through our remote learning reality. We'll use this tool as we close out this year and we will continue to use it as we move into next year. Please check out this system on our website. Just click on the junior, senior, high section of the website and then access the complete goal setting and mindfulness website under our, our school tab. As we move forward, this program can serve as a valuable tool to students work to, as they work to achieve their specific academic or even extracurricular goals. It's doing these types of things that will separate us from individuals and communities not willing to make that extra commitment to being the best. I hope that after you've given it a chance, you'll agree with me that by going the extra mile, by using things like our goal setting program, is one more reason why Canastota is and will continue to be for years to come the hometown of champions. I'll see you again next week. When, with the help of Canastota history expert Joe DiGiorgio, we'll learn more about incredible people from Canastota who have made us the hometown of champions. Have a great, great weekend. Go Raiders!